So we work on the infective stage of the malaria parasite, the stage that's injected by the mosquito, the infected mosquito. They're called sporozoites. And we're interested in sort of the basic biology of the sporozoite. How does it get to where it needs to be? It's injected into the skin, it needs to go to the liver. So we study sort of the cellular and molecular interactions between host and parasite. Uh, that lead to really the establishment of malaria infection. So when mosquitoes are looking for blood, they probe in the skin and they actually inject their saliva. All blood-sucking insects inject saliva into the skin as they look for blood. And so the damage caused by their proboscis, in, in addition to the saliva, actually does induce an innate inflammatory response. And so with sporozoite injection by mosquitoes, we have seen a neutrophil response um, we haven't published it yet, but there's a neutrophil response to the sporozoite. Uh, other people have found um, that mast cells degranulate uh, in response to the mosquito saliva. They have not actually looked at sporozoites. And mast cell degranulation is sort of a danger signal and, uh, and leads to the infiltration of neutrophils. So that's the innate immune response. And it's really to the mosquito components of, of the bite, but the sporozoites are there. So we have found, I mean, we've looked at this. So now, you know, in, in rodent models, you can take away the neutrophils and look at infection, and we have found no evidence that, um, that this innate response does anything to the parasite. And if you think about it long-term, sort of evolutionarily, it makes sense that the parasite has figured out a way to get past the host innate immune response. So the adaptive response is different, where we make antibodies to sporozoites, which we do eventually. Um, and, and I do think that these can have uh, a protective effect in the skin when the sporozoite is moving around looking for a blood vessel. In fact, I would argue that that may be in part uh, how the current best malaria candidate vaccine Candidate malaria vaccine that we have, RTSS, is probably working. So they've, they have found in, in field um, studies that it's antibody titers that are correlated with immunity. There have been some very nice studies uh, with immunized children. And, um, and so antibodies would really target the sporozoite stage and not the liver stage. And, and I would argue, they haven't shown this, of course, because that's not, it's, it's not really feasible, but I would argue that antibodies probably have their greatest impact in the skin rather than in the blood circulation, because they're in the blood circulation for very little time. They get carried with the blood and they just go to the, to the liver. So, um, and we're starting to look at that, the role of antibodies in the skin. Um, you know, at titers that you might see after vaccination. So I don't think that this, I mean, this is an area of investigation, but I think there is some promise there. So the sporozoite, it's one of the few times that the parasite is extracellular, not within a, not within a cell, right? Because in the blood stages, it's within a red cell. In the liver, it's within a hepatocyte. So this is a great time to target with antibodies. Um, and in order to get out of the skin, the sporozoites are actively motile and they have to move around and find a blood vessel and this takes some time. And so, um, so anything that interferes with their motility could potentially uh, prevent them from finding a vessel and reaching their target, the liver, and, continue, and establishing infection. In endemic areas, I think it's hard to use drugs that would target the sporozoite because they would always have to be on board for the time, the moment when you got bitten. This is a little complicated. I mean, it's more feasible to use it as a prophylactic uh, in terms of the sporozoite stage, uh, but vaccination is a better approach um, for people living in endemic areas, I think.